When we define an absolute value function, it's linked to a compound or piecewise defined function. So if you have not looked at the video on compound functions, I suggest you do that first. So the absolute value is defined as the absolute value of a number x is x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and minus x if x is less than 0. So that is how we define the absolute value. Now the absolute value function, we're going to look at how to sketch it, but let's just, if you're not 100% familiar with absolute values, let's just see how it behaves. The absolute value of a positive number, for example 5, we'll just leave it alone. The absolute value of 0, it'll stay the same. Absolute value of minus 3, if my value is less than 0, multiplied with a minus, so a minus minus 3 is a positive 3. So the absolute value looks at the size of the number and we don't look at the sign. We get it rid of the sign to just look at the absolute size of the number. So if you look at the way the absolute value is written there, it's written as a compound function. It's made up of two parts with distinct domains for each of them. If I had to sketch that function, if I've got the function y equal to the absolute value of x, it's easy, best to first write it as a compound function. It's x if x is greater than or equal to 0. So here at 0, for greater than or equal to 0, I've got the straight line x. That's nice and easy. Minus x if x is less than 0. Straight line in that direction. So that is what the absolute value function is. It's got a sharp point, two straight lines. Now the absolute value of x never, touches, never gets into the negative y values as it stands there. All right, so let's just look at two examples that are a little bit more complicated. So if my function f of x is the absolute value of x minus 1. First thing, let's write it as a compound function. There is a shortcut to be able to draw it quite quickly if you're familiar with absolute value functions, but I'm going to just take it stepwise to show you where it comes from. So what my definition tells me, it says whatever's between these absolute value lines stays the same if that thing is greater than or equal to 0. I put a minus in front of it if that thing, whatever's between the absolute value signs, are, is less than 0. So let's tidy this up. That's x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1. It's minus x plus 1 if x is less than 1. All right, so now things are happening here at value 1. For values greater than or equal to 1, we've got the straight line x, plus, x minus 1, which is a straight line that goes like that, where this value is minus 1, but I only want the part where x is greater than or equal to 1. So this is the part I want, and I'm including that point. And it's got the function minus x plus 1, which looks like this. But which part do I want? Where x's are less than 1. So I just want that part, and that y value is 1. So that's my absolute value of x minus 1 function. Cuts the x-axis at 1, and it's the two lines like that. Next one, the absolute value of 2x plus 1. If I do write that as a compound function, it's 2x plus 1. If 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, it's minus 2x plus 1 if 2x plus 1 is less than 0. Let's tidy this up. That is 2x plus 1 if 2x is greater than or equal to minus 1. So x is greater than or equal to minus a half. Minus 2x minus 1 if 2x is less than minus 1. So x is less than minus a half. So now things are happening here around minus a half. And what we have, the line 2x plus 1. So a gradient of 2 cutting the y-axis at 1 for x values greater than or equal to minus a half and minus 2x minus 1 for x values less than minus a half. And that is the absolute value function.